Good afternoon. Hello. We'll, uh, at some point later today, we'll send out an email with uh, all of tomorrow's interview room times for both the Yankees and the Twins. So we'll, we'll shoot that out uh, later this afternoon. Who'd like to start? Sweeney. Aaron, do you have any rotation set yet? <coughs> no. no. Um, hopefully finalize that today. Um, but still going through a couple of conversations on that and then want to get with, with each guy and, and let them know where we're at. You know how many pitchers you're taking yet? <laughs> That'll be a final call as well today um, that you know we'll meet um, as a staff <clears throat> after the workout and, and hopefully finalize you know whether it's 12 or 13. How's Encarnacion? Good. He's out there hitting right now. That's why I was a little late. Um, he's having probably his last at bat. Um, you know, had a full sim sim day yesterday where he got off a lot of aggressive swings. Came in today feeling good. Looked good out there today swinging the bat. Eric and Bruce. When you talked in Texas about Edwin, you said he wasn't ready to quite turn it loose yet. You get this sense that he's swinging at a, at a hundred percent or close to it. I do. Yeah. Um, smoked a couple balls out there, hit a homer. Um, and yesterday really cut loose with some. And I think in his mind, you know, he swung aggressively at a couple where he swung and missed where, where that's, you know, where you're going to notice it probably. And I, I think he got through that. So I think yesterday was a little confidence builder for him as far as the ability to let it go. And then coming in today, feeling, feeling like he's ready. So hopefully we get through today and, and make that decision. Bruce. Aaron, how do you feel about your group overall that's going into the postseason, and are you worried in any way with the way that you finish the season? I uh, feel great about our group. Um, you mean as far as the last road trip? No, I mean, I, I should – let me put it this way. I'm always concerned about our team. Um, so, you know, anything, whether it's positive, whether it's some things you want to see guys get it rolling, things like that um, – but I do feel like we'll be in a position starting Friday where I know the guys will be in a great frame of mind and ready to put our best foot forward, and I'm confident that'll be the case. George, to the right. Aaron, would you play Encarnacion at first? I would. Um, I don't envision that role, certainly initially. Um, but, yes, as far as am I comfortable if, if he's on the roster doing that, yes. To the left here. You are watching Massa's bullpen earlier today. Was there something thing that you wanted to check before you finalize your rotation? Um, no, I just, you know, in the course of the things I've had to do today, I had an opportunity to go out there and watch it. So, um, you know, finalizing and having those conversations with him and, um, and, and Sevy and Pax and Hap and letting them know, you know, how we plan on lining this up and, starting to have those conversations that, you know, they're a little bit involved with as well. And, um, you know, again, hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have that locked up. Uh, Dan to the left. Aaron, uh, has Urshela been doing anything? Yeah. Geo's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm not concerned. No, uh, no lingering no effects. No, he, he full workout yesterday and he's good to go. James, all the way in the back, right? I know you said some of this is dependent on Edwin, but how, how do you see first base shaking out? I mean, potentially have three first mm -hmm. baseman right now, even four. Like, how would you see, you know, LeMahieu playing out there or, right. or elsewhere? Well, DJ's certainly an option there. Um, you know, feel like as long as Edwin gets through today, um, we'll be in a really good position from a health standpoint to make the best decision. You know, obviously the guys you're thinking of, um, we, f we feel confident in all of them and their ability to uh, impact us. So, um those will be the conversations that we have today as far as finalizing and, and which way we want to go. Um, but as long as Edwin gets through today, we feel good about um, the decisions we'll have. Marley and Bob. Aaron, out of the 25 men roster that you're going to have on Friday, how many spots do you think are left up for grabs? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, technically at this point, zero, because we're going to make a decision today. But... Um, but there will be conversation as far as, you know, the two or three guys that we're considering for, you know, that final spot. 
and obviously a a lot go, comes down to um, what we decide from a pitching standpoint, taking 12 or 13, and uh, you know that'll certainly impact uh, what we do on the position player side. All the way to the right, Bob. I'll keep you up. Aaron, at some point, whether it's uh, game one or not, I mean, you're going to give the ball to, to Paxton, who's never pitched in a, in a postseason game, and I, I think I know how you're going to answer this, but you know, it's a lot to put on someone's shoulders for the first time, and so perhaps you could talk about his makeup and what you expect to see from him in an unfamiliar setting. I expect him to go pitch really well and have a ton of confidence in his ability to do that. Um, he's got obviously all the weapons and all the equipment to go out there and, and be great. Um, I feel like through the course of the year, he's really, um, I think done a good job in, in kind of settling into being here in New York, being a Yankee, um, you know, I, I feel like, especially in the second half of the season, just his focus, um, his conviction in what he's doing, and his confidence in his ability to go execute, um, I feel like has been excellent. And um, I have no reservations about him not being able to uh, not flourish in the environment. George, back to George, to the right. You know, in Texas, you said CC probably be on the roster. Have you firmed that up one way or the other? We have not. We'll. Uh, it's another thing we're kind of working through today, and it'll be one of those conversations. Uh, John and Joe to the right. Aaron, two full seasons of managing now. Are there specific lessons though you take from the five postseason games last year as you get it ready for this week? Um. Man, I hope so. I mean, you know, being in it for the first time, um, you know, you try and um, learn from every situation you're put in, and and certainly uh, the postseason and and the um, kind of the flow of the game, um, just the pace and the tempo of of things and the urgency. Obviously, um, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna list specifically things that to you that you know I've learned but we're constantly trying to learn and evaluate from every situation I've been in and that's starting from when I got the job to to now and uh in the in the playoffs was part of that uh Joe to the right Aaron we've seen the evolution of how bullpen arms are used in the playoffs over the last few years um so does your thinking change about how and when you're going to go to them in the playoffs? And, and why do you think this particular group is set up for success in the postseason? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a little bit different than than the regular season. And we certainly feel like it's a strength of our club, our bullpen. Um, you know, obviously some built-in off days that you try and take advantage of. Um, you know, the regular season where you're playing every day, um, there's there's a little bit of a big picture um, way you go about things on a particular day. Um, obviously, it's a lot more about today, more so than even the regular season. I I mean, obviously, that's the biggest difference. Joel. But we we will be aggressive because we think our bullpen is obviously if we're going to do well, um, they're going to play a huge role. Joel to the right. Aaron, uh, you have a playoff game in two days, and it feels like there's still a lot of moving parts on roster and how you're going to try to get 27 outs in each of those games. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that makes the manager of a team about to start a playoff series feel. Uh, I'm, I feel good about it. I'm In my head right now, I'm pretty clear about which way we're going to go. In my mind, um, it's starting to come together about how I picture us lining up our starters, um, what our roster looks like. Um, again, but it's about us meeting today and kind of finalizing those things. Um, but I can certainly envision, um, you know, how, how it might look and how we might roll it out. Um, you know, obviously plans always change, um, you know, when, when things, when, when inevitably you, you get thrown a curveball in the game. So, uh, we'll try and be ready for every situation and, uh, and try and do all we can to to put our guys in the best position to go out and thrive. Brendan. 
What are you guys deciding on when it comes to CC and is he healthy? Um, th that's kind of what we're deciding on, just making sure, you know, he's good to go. He's good for this role. You know, he can handle it. So that's one of the things we're kind of working through today. Uh, Dave. Dave. Aaron, what, what kind of pressure do you feel going in as a manager? I mean, a lot of people, at least for us from the outside, you know, you guys have always, the Yankees have always beaten the Twins in the playoffs, and this is your second time in. <clears throat> do you feel a lot of a lot of pressure going into this personally? Um, you know, part of the playoffs is pressure, um, and you try and embrace that and and use that in a positive way, you know. Um, and it'll be one of the things we talk about as a group and with our guys is, um, you know, nerves and excitement and anxious and all those kind of things um, are all feelings guys are going to have. And, and hopefully it's something that we channel in a positive way, myself included. Do you feel like you're a much better manager than you were a year ago, Aaron? Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I hope so. Uh, Mark, all the way in the back, right? Aaron, I mean, you've got a lot of roster stuff that you've got your hands on, obviously, but I wonder how much does a manager now have to involve himself also in game planning, especially when you're talking about aggressively using your bullpen? I guess how much of your time at this point is even focused on that part of it? Um, on the specific game plan, I've just kind of, I'm a, you know, as far as our, our pitching plan and how we're going to attack, our hitting plan how we're going to attack certainly you know i have kind of a i'm not specifically involved in how we're attacking a, a particular guy that's you know staff members larry those guys obviously marcus and pj and our analysts play a big role in in things we do from an offensive standpoint as far as the micro part of things um so i'm aware and keep abreast and touch those guys and touch those things all the time. Um, and then when it comes down to when we go into a game and how we're going to use particular guys, um, obviously that that's the part that I get very involved in. Dave, to the left. With uh, with Didi, you know, obviously he's, he's been struggling the last few weeks especially. How much does that factor into how you either come up with your lineup going forward or, or does it not, you know, when, when you have a guy with his experience but in an extended uh, slump? Yeah, um, you know, I'm counting on D.D. playing a huge role for us. I mean, um, you know, I know he struggled here a little bit in, in this final month, but know that um, it's certainly in there. Um, he's one of those guys that I feel like will be better off in this kind of environment and these kind of games and um, – if we're going to go far, Didi's going to play a big role in that. And you're confident he's healthy. And yeah, there's no I issues am. there. Yeah. Uh, over to the right here, Kenny, and then right behind him, Aaron. Uh, Judge has looked like himself for a while now after that after that funk. Uh, do you think that was just getting back to full health or, or something else? No, um, because when he came back, I thought he was great. Um, I thought he was really locked in, and then. There was that stretch where, where he struggled a little bit, wasn't getting results, obviously, what, whether it was a two-week stretch where, you know, I think he was a little out of whack. Um, and then he obviously really started to take off. But even even when he was rolling there for a while, um, I still didn't personally feel like he was locked in like I know he's going to be. And I feel like in these last week, 10 days, two weeks, um, I've really started to see it with him. And he's another one of those guys that, um, you know, I feel like the brighter the lights, the bigger the stage, uh, the more locked in he'll be. And um, I'm expecting big things from Aaron. You thought it was just timing mechanics issue prior to that? Yes. Kenny, right behind you. Yeah. Aaron, you mentioned that you pretty much have the roster set in your mind. You still have to meet about it. Is there anything that you'd be looking for today on the field that might change your mind for one player or another? Um, Not really. I mean, I think it's it comes down to us meeting and kind of phil philosophically making sure we're on the same play page and what makes the most sense as far as, again, you know, 12, 13 pitchers, that, that'll be one of the big decisions. And then obviously which way we go there impacts what we do on the position player side. So um, that'll be the biggest thing today. 
um, to, as far as today, what happening, Edwin, making sure Edwin comes out of this okay and we feel good to go with him as far as putting him on. So, um, you know, early returns are, are good in that regard, but we still got to get through today with that. Dan and Eric and Bradford. Do you feel like uh, Giancarlo has gotten enough at bats to uh, to get to where he needs to be? I do. Um, you know, is it perfect? I mean, no. You'd like to have him have a season and really have, um, you know, been there and going in with, you know, at a ton of at bats. But that said, um, you know, to, to be able to get out there the final ten days days of the season or so. Um, I think was really valuable. Um, G's a worker, so the three weeks leading up to even him getting back in games with us, um, I do feel like he was seeing a lot of live at bats, which I think is really valuable for him. Um, and and I felt like overall these final ten days where he was able to get in games with us, I thought his at bat quality was pretty good, and. Uh, and and physically, I thought he was moving around well. Um, you know, whether it was in the outfield, his ability to move laterally, um, cut some balls off in the gap, um, come in and make throws, the way he looked running the bases, running out of extra base hits, things like that, I thought were, were good. So um, I feel like he's, he's in a pretty good place, uh, you know, heading in. Um, is it perfect? No, but I feel like um, I feel good about what he was able to do, and I think it went about as well as we could have hoped, um, considering where we were, say, a month ago. Um, and so and I you're think, okay with him in the outfield? Yeah. 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 Eric, to the right. Aaron, what do you make of just how one-sided this rivalry has been, both in the postseason and the regular season? I think it's 99-37 and 37 since 2003. <laughs> Um, <laughs> teams change. I mean, that, um, all I know is we're up against a really good opponent. Um, so I don't at all get caught up in the history of it, honestly. Um, because I just think there's so many guys that had nothing to do with some of that. And uh, we know we're playing a great team, and but we're also confident that if we play our game, um, we have a chance to advance. I mean, it's as simple as that, but we know we have to play well to do that. Bradford. So uh, if you do go with 12 uh, pitch instead of, instead of 13 in this an extra position player space, do you expect to prioritize power more or like a speed defense versatility kind of you know addition? That'll be the final conversation today, I guess. Um, deciding that, you know, first the 12th or the 13th pitcher, and then um, what makes the most sense um, as far as what gives us the, the best option off the bench. Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of you can formulate the people that are involved in those decisions. Um, so those will be the conversations that we finalize hopefully today. Two more, Bruce and Sweeney. Aaron, you talked a lot about the bullpen. We will be aggressive. Our bullpen will play a huge role. Do you think you've got the rotation to win it all? Sure. Um, and the one good thing is, you know, where I've kind of been going back and forth these last couple of days about, you know, who to pitch in game one, who in two, three, et cetera. Um, you know, I think part of that back and forth comes from an area of confidence and feeling like our starters, um, you know, are in a really good place right now. You know, you talk about Pax and his ability the last couple of months and, and what he's been able to do and how well he's throwing the ball. Seve, you know, coming back from the IL, I think it's gone about as good as we could have hoped you know, and feel really good about where he's at right now. Um, Massa, we always feel good about giving the ball to. And, and Jay Happ, for having a, a tough year in a lot of respects, I feel like his last six, seven starts or whatever it's been, has been as good as he's been all year. So I feel like he's in a good place throwing the ball, and therefore I feel like we have a lot of 
good decisions to make about who to give it, but it's because those guys we have a lot of confidence in. Sweetie. Aaron, did you watch last night? I did. Come on, man. Yeah. Seems like the Brewers had everything lined up for them as far as the way they wanted to deploy their pitchers. As a manager who wants to have his bullpen line up a certain way and still see the result turn out the way that it did, I'm curious what you thought watching that. Yeah, I mean, it was a great baseball game. And both teams are good, and sometimes, uh, you know, there has to be a winner and a loser. And sometimes, you know, because it lines up perfect doesn't mean uh, the opponent still has something to do with it. And uh, that's the beauty of, of last night. You know, obviously the Brewers get off to a great start with their starter, probably giving them a little more than they even thought. Um, but then you see um, some really good at-bats against one of the game's best relievers there at the end to put themselves in a position. You get a broken bat. You get a really a, a great walk by Rendon, and then one of the game's best young players hits one on the barrel, and, and here you go. I mean, it's it's two good teams that played well. Um that executed and somebody had to walk away. Thank you.